Hello, everybody. My camera is totally flipped wrong. Again, I'm gonna be looking at the wrong side of the camera. <laughs> I um, was about to go live and my phone popped off my holder and went down into the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> literally like 20 seconds ago. So I hope that that's not an indication of how today's gonna go. All right, stay, it's shaking a little bit. I'm gonna stop touching it. Let's see if it'll straighten up. Hello, I hope you guys have had a good week. Um, today is the Potted Geraniums stamp set. Um, I'm gonna be honest and let you guys know, this wasn't really on my radar. When I sketched out what I was going to do this summer for Facebook Friday, um, this was not, I'm trying to open Facebook, this was not on the list. It was not. Um, however, I had a lot of people saying this was on their like top three. So, and then I had a couple of people ask me if I was going to use it. So I thought, you know what, what I had penciled in for this week was bottled happiness and I wasn't really feeling it. So I switched it and I'm so glad that I did because you guys, you know, you always say I'm able to convince you that you need something. You guys convinced me. This is a really good set. Um, I, I feel like I have a lot of flowers. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to do more flowers, but this one's really good. So thank you for all of you who suggested it. I think you're going to like what we do today. Um, let's see. Okay. I think before I flip over before I show you some things I do want to think I got three cards um this week so I want to show you those um this first one is from Cheryl simple hugs very sweet and I loved what Cheryl had on the back of her envelope I know it's going to be backwards but it says glued never lit I thought that was really funny I need that stamp so cute thank you Cheryl I appreciate it um you guys are always so good about sending thank you cards I am not that great. I try to be, but I'm not that great. This is from Carol. This was our past celebration paper. Remember that? And stamp set came as a bundle. Beautiful. Very pretty. Um, there's a lot to look at here. I love it. Very nice. Thank you, Carol, very much. And you guys have been so sweet, the things that you've been saying in your cards. Thank you. Um, and then this one is from Vicki. Um, I loved this set. I don't know if you guys remember. Um, last fall, I pulled out the grapevine set and used it with the pumpkins. And it was so cool. It went so perfectly together as a pumpkin vine. Um, so Carol used it in the, I mean, Vicki used it in the correct way as a grapevine. Very pretty. Um, she even added the little like shimmer paper leaves, which is really pretty. So thank you very much. So nice to get cards in the mail. I um, get the USPS, what are they called? You get the email every day and it tells you what's coming in your mail. So I can see sometimes when I'm getting a card from somebody and I always get to the mail a little bit faster when I know I'm getting something fun in the mail. So thank you guys, I appreciate it. Um, okay, so, oh, you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to pull out a prize. Well, that's all right. Don't worry, I will have a prize. Um, let me tell you about the all-star tutorial. Is the camera still moving? I'm trying to look, I think it's okay. Um, all-star tutorial, This is there's just a few days left for the flowering fields um, tutorial bundle. It will always be available in my PDF store, but for the month of May, it's available for free with any order over $50. Um, my project this month is a little desktop flower crate um, the video or the tutorials in here are both, or no, they're video tutorials, links to videos. Then they have measurements in Imperial and metric. So depending on what country you live in, it should be applicable, right? Um, all the tutorials are by other people. Me, I'm like, words are hard today. <laughs> all the tutorials are designed by 12 other Stampin' Up! demonstrators, 12 not other, 12 Stampin' Up! demonstrators, me included. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I'm one of 12. So you get a lot of different styles, a different, um, you know, people's styles. Everybody has a different stamping style. So that's why I like these, because you get a little bit of, you know, like I always try to do a 3D project, um, but not everybody likes 3D projects. So then there's cards. So there's a little something in here for everybody. So if you're looking for that, it's in my PDF store. Um, Next month, oh, I have my project here. Next month uh, is the Heart and Home 
sweet. You know, the little bumblebee from the spring catalog. This will be the last thing we do from the spring catalog. This will come out on June 1st. And um, just a heads up to my subscribers. I am traveling that day, so it will probably come late. Or if I can get it on the 31st, I'll send it then. But I don't know. Don't worry. You'll get it. Um, but just know that I'll be traveling. But anyway, there's my project. And then the PDF will be listed in my PDF store if you like that sweet um, from the spring catalog. All right, speaking of the spring catalog, this one right here, it's actually the official name is January to June 2022 mini catalog. It's retiring at the end of June. And <laughs> Stampin' Up! released the last chance list this week. And I, in my fog of this week, just posted it and shared it. Didn't realize that it doesn't go live until June 1st. So I apologize to those of you who are looking for the discounts. They're not up until June 1st. I mean, you should pretty much know what's retiring. If it's not in the annual catalog, right, then it's leaving this catalog. So um, I already saw that um, the baseball stuff. Uh, now I can't think of any of the names. I tell you guys, once a new catalog comes out, it's like the, the other one is just dead. I can't even remember it. Um, the What's it called? Um, He's All That. I, I saw that part of that is on low inventory. I can't remember which part, maybe the paper, the dies, I don't know. Um, but my point is that once that su while supplies last list comes out, all of those things become, once the, what did I say? Once the last chance list comes out, all of those products become while supplies last. And we know that that is like, they're serious. <laughs> they're not joking around. Um, stamps, dies, it used to just be, um, like you could get stamps through the third week, they were guaranteed, but not anymore. Nothing is guaranteed. If it's on that last chance list, it's not guaranteed. And as soon as they sell out, it's gone. So if there is, if there are things in here that you want that are not carrying over to the new catalog or even like bundled things, um, bundle pricing doesn't always carry over. Sometimes they carry over if it was in the spring catalog, but not always. And I never understand why some things are in a bundle and some things aren't. Anyways, you can cross check this catalog with the other catalog and see, um, but um, just know that it's leaving at the end of June. That list will come out June 1st. Again, I'm traveling on June 1st. It's gonna be difficult for me to be posting all these things at that time, So, but just know that it'll be up and it'll be available on June 1st, okay? So that is that. Um, I love that catalog and I feel like there's still a lot in there that I didn't even use. Luckily, a lot of it has carried over to the annual catalog, which makes me happy. One of the things, is this the one or is it the, was it the annual catalog? Oh yeah, one of the things in here that I loved were the pebble enamel shapes. You guys know what I'm talking about, the little rocks? And those didn't carry over. The sea glass is in the annual catalog, but those pebble shapes were so cute. I was really hoping those would carry over. And of course, the paper's always good too. Um, another thing that I am sad, well, there's several, the rainbows are retiring the, um, home and garden bundle, right? Or did that carry over? See, I can't remember. I know the rainbows did not carry over, which is very disappointing because that was so good. The gumball greetings bundle. There's a lot of things in here. The official list will be out on Monday for you guys to see. Anyhow, some of it will be disc discounted. Yay. Okay, moving on. Um, this is also the end of the, what are they calling it? Starter kit in color bonus. Um, I've been telling you guys about the in color bonus you can get in your starter kit. The starter kit is $99. Um, you get $125 in product of your choice, always, whatever you want. And then just in May, you get this in color product bundle, which includes cardstock, grid paper, ink pads, and DSP. It's a really good deal. It's like an additional $66 in product so that you get still just for that $99. Um, that ends on the 31st, which is what, Tuesday? So if you've been thinking about the starter kit, make sure that you jump on that before the end of the month because it's a great deal. Um, there is a link at the top of my blog that says join. Click that and that will give you the details as well as that link if you wanna buy the starter kit. Okay, I'm gonna turn you guys around and I'm gonna show you a couple of things, okay? My, let's see, where is my, where's my camera? 
everything is backwards and I'm very confused. Okay, let's see. Now I wonder if I turn it this, no, I can't, I don't think I can turn it. Once you go live, you can't change the orientation of your video, which can be a little nerve wracking if you go live when you weren't ready to go live or you went live like me after you pulled your phone out of the trash can and the camera's on the wrong side. Okay, um, let me talk about um, Paper Pumpkin. Coming up, pick of the crop is June's kit. Super cute, it's got like a little strawberry, some fruit, real cute. It's got these canvas bags. So make sure you are subscribed. I'm not gonna have very many extras this summer. Um, so if you want that, make sure that you subscribe. I do still have extras of these three. Let me pull them over. Um, actually, I have four different kits. Um, the Change is Beautiful kit. I have these. If you're looking for a kit, if you're looking for things to do in the summer, I've got some kits for you. There's that Change is Beautiful. That was April's kit. I've got this month's kit, which is Celebrating in Color. And then I have two kits that I'm selling for just 20 bucks, these two, because I've got, I've got a lot of them. Celebrate, uh, Safari Celebration, it's really cute. It's a great kit for kids. Not just for kids, but it is a good one if you have a kid that likes um, Paper Pumpkin. And then Kisses and Hugs, 20 bucks, shipped, okay? So if you want those, please email me. I'm trying to clean out my Paper Pumpkin shelf. I always have extra kits. And uh, it's pretty full right now. Okay, um, let me talk about the uh, Club Create this month. He's all that. Club Create subscriptions are closed. I am maxed out. Um, but the PDF slash video is available in my PDF store. Um, we're doing the He's All That uh, uh, suite in June. If you are a current Club Create member, I sent out the add-on email yesterday right? It was yesterday. And um, as well as the, if it's your sixth month, I sent out that email as well. If you did not get it, make sure that you email me, please. Okay. Next month's kit, I've got a sneak peek for you. Cheerful basket, not next month. This will be July's kit featuring the cheerful basket. We've got four cards and this little box, which isn't necessarily a card holder, it can hold cards, but it also could hold embellishments. That's how I originally designed it, to sit on your desk and hold embellishments. So that's coming. I'll talk to you guys more about that in two weeks when we have the next Facebook Friday. But I just want to always give a heads up to my Club Create members of what's coming, because if you hate it, <laughs> then you can cancel so that you don't get it. All right? Surely you won't hate it, but you never know. We all have different styles, right? Okay, hey, speaking of Cheerful Basket, last week's winner is Lisa Keen. Lisa, I have your mailing address. She shared my um, video on Facebook. So Lisa, thank you very much. I will get this in the mail for you. I love this stamp set. I love the way it's drawn, so cute. So anyway, thanks Lisa. Um, let me see if I can grab a prize. I forgot to pull out a prize. Hold on, hold on just one second. Let me see what I have. Um, oh, 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 I know, I know, I know. I have a good one. Hold on, let me find it. Where is it? I just got new prizes. Okay, here it is. How about this one? Charming Sentiments. I love this bundle. In fact, we're using this in that Club Create kit, by the way. How cute is it? All these dies cut these out. It's a ton of dies. There's a lot of dies in here, 30 dies. So this will be the prize in two weeks. There won't be a Facebook Live next week. I'm gonna be out of town. Um, so this will be for two weeks from now. If you share the video on Facebook or YouTube, leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll put you in the drawing to win this uh, Charming Sentiments. This is Lisa Curcio's Million Dollar Stamp Set. I love it. I'm a big fan. All right. Now, let's see what else do we have. Okay, this week's Facebook Friday is gonna be very different. Um, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be out of town all next week, so I will not be a, available to cut the make and takes. Usually, I say you can get the make and takes for free with a $35 order. That's not gonna happen this week. If you order between now and Monday at midnight, 
and your order is over $50, I will send you a um, free embellishment when I get back in town the following week as a thank you, okay? So the order minimum this week is $50 and it's a free embellishment. Um, I'm gonna be gone next week. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do. Usually I have some kind of special while I'm gone. <laughs> I am really behind. I have nothing planned for my blog next week. So I, I gotta um, get cracking. I don't know, but stay tuned. I'll have some things. I'm going on a Stampin' Up! event. Well, not an official Stampin' Up! event, but a Stampin' Up! demonstrator gathering. Um, so I'll have some things to share from there too. Um, but just stay tuned for that. I don't know. I, I'm brain dead this week, having a hard time, you know, planning far ahead. So, um, but, but this weekend, if you want to put an order between now and Monday at midnight, I will send you um, a free embellishment. And as I mentioned yesterday, you guys, I can't really talk about it because I am a mess. But as you know, here in South Texas, we had a horrible thing happen on Tuesday. Um, and it's, it's awful. Like I, I, I literally can't talk about it. So all the profits from any orders I get this week, uh, I swore I wasn't going to get emotional. This is ridiculous. And, um, PDF sales. I'm donating all that money. Okay. That's, I'm just not going to talk about it because I'm a mess. Ugh. okay. Let's stamp. Okay. <laughs> Those details are on my blog today if you want to read about them. Um, oh, oh, there's two other things I need to tell you. Oh, no, I did tell you about that. Um, next, um, when is June, January? January. June 1st is Wednesday. June 1st, Stampin' Up! is going to have, um, all of June, they're going to have a BOGO, a kit BOGO sale. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, and I haven't read all the details. <laughs> um, but it's going to be a buy one, get one half off sale of the kits. Um, other than that, I don't know any other details. Just know if you're a kit person, get ready because next Wednesday, beginning next Wednesday, their kits are going to be buy one, get one half off, which is a great deal. I don't ever remember us having a sale like that. So they've gotten kind of creative with our sales lately. So I'm excited. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I did tell you about the spring catalog last chance list. The starter kit, da, 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 da. Okay, we're good. We are ready to go. Um, okay, so today it's potted geraniums. I'm moving on. I'm taking a breath. Ugh. Goodness. All right. So potted geraniums, you guys, you know that I don't know plant names, right? Like I never know what a plant is called <laughs> or anything when, when I stamp with it, I never know. And you guys always inform me. But geraniums, I know because here in South Texas, that's one of the things that people have in their yards. They grow. And I always think that I don't like geraniums because really it's like the only choice, <laughs> right, for flowers. For somebody like me who's not a gardening person, but they are everywhere. So I think maybe that was part of my hesitation with this set um, because I was like, eh, geraniums. But again, it's a really cute set. You can stamp the geraniums or you can die cut them. And look at this label. I love it. It's very cute. So that's what we're going to do. The first card we're going to make is a stamped um, geranium. Hey, has anybody checked the blog? Is it up? Um, this is over there the supply list. And I did clean recordings of the video. <laughs> I mean, yes, clean recordings of the projects, barely. Had a hard time getting them done, but they should be up there. And one thing I want to point out is when I did this card in the video, I used different colors from the sample. <laughs> what happens is that I make the samples and then like I sleep for like, you know, a couple nights and I can't remember what I did. So this one, the original sample that you see on on my blog is Old Olive and Melon Mambo. But the card that I make on the clean recording is Garden Green and Polished Pink. But I think we'll do Melon Mambo again today because I do everything in Polished Pink. Melon Mambo needs some attention too, right? All right, we're gonna do stamping first. And this is a two-step stamp, which means it takes two stamps to make the image. And it has layers. All right, so I'm gonna get those out. My 
stamp set is a mess because I've been pulling them out, throwing them in, pulling them out, throwing them in. And we're going to start with this, the solid background of the flowers, okay? And we're going to stamp that in, well, I didn't put my magnets in the right place. We're going to stamp that in Melon Mambo, but we're going to stamp off first. You got to put your, your magnets pretty close when it's a photopolymer because photopolymers are sticky and they will pull your paper up. Um, so make sure you utilize your magnets. So Melon Mambo, but I'm going to stamp off first, which means I'm going to take it and stamp it on scrap paper and then stamp it on my white cardstock. All right. And then you get your second stamp and you can do this backwards too. I know some people, and sometimes I do prefer to do the top layer first. So you lay it on there, get it lined up, and then you stamp it in full strength. And I don't know if you guys can see just how detailed that stamp is, but it's really detailed. It is uh, kind of like, every time I stamp it, I, I'm kind of like shocked <laughs> by how detailed it is. I'm looking for my chamois. So that's the stamp. And then we're gonna do the greenery. Do you guys have geraniums where you live? Like, is that, they probably grow everywhere. Everywhere, I would think. They're pretty uh, versatile flowers. If they grow here, <laughs> then they are versatile because here from about mid-April to mid-October at least, it's too hot for anything. It's just too hot. And if you are not like giving your plants constant attention, then they die. And also, it, I always tease my mom. My mom's from Memphis where things grow really nicely. If it says full sun, you know, when you buy it, well, that doesn't mean full South Texas sun. <laughs> that means South Texas shade um, because nothing except maybe cactus and uh, like, um, oh, what are the, the pointy ones called? Um, I'm losing my, my thought. You know, you the yuccas. I think those are the only things that will grow in full sun. <laughs> okay, that did not do very well, but why is that? Maybe my magnet's too low. So this is garden green. I stamped off again there. That's better. And now I'm going to take this part and lay it down on here. Just wiggle it around until it, like once it like gets in the right place, you know, you can kind of see it or you, you know, just kind of like, oh, there it is. And then full strength garden green. Okay. There we go. Now there are white spots and I thought the first time that I stamped it, I didn't line it up right, but it's supposed to be like that. Apparently there's like, you know, like variation, like shade and uh, not shade, but like shine, shine marks on the leaves. Okay. So we've got that now for the pot, we're just going to stamp it in crumb cake and Let's see where my pot stamp is. I have all the stamps pulled out. Well, maybe we won't stamp it. Hold on. Hold, please. Huh. That's very strange because it's not here. Did I miss it? There's that one. I had everything out on a block and now it's gone. Oh, maybe it's on the tray. Yep. Hello. Here it is. All right. You know, you think you're organized, and then you're not. All right, we're gonna stamp the um, pot in crumb cake. I really miss cinnamon cider. Cinnamon cider makes a great terracotta color. Maybe it'll come back in a refresh. And then we've got this little, what do you call those? Pot, like a, you know, like the little picks you put down into a uh, pot pot sign, pot label, <laughs> no, plant label, maybe pot's not the right word. Okay, there, now we've got it all. Let's bring over the cut and emboss machine. Close up Melon Mambo. Melon Mambo is one of those colors that is just begging to get on everything. 
All right. My hair does not belong <laughs> on the cut and emboss machine. Now the dies, let's spring over the dies. And I will tell you also when I first started using this set, the dies were a little confusing. So you kind of have to get a feel for them. Um, in the next project, I'll show you a couple of little like tips on those dies, especially the ones that make the paper pieced geraniums. All right, so we got all that cut out. We're gonna get all this cut out. And then we're gonna do this other die that is called split texture card. Split card texture, split texture card. Oh, where's my list? Mm -hmm. Where's my list? I'll tell you the official name right here. Split card textures dies. And funny enough, I made this card without really looking at anything online. And then later on, I saw several people had made a card with the geraniums and the split card texture die. So I guess they kind of go together pretty well. If other people, if we all kind of put it together the same. So you can do this with either one. I like this one the best because, you know, I'm a geometric fan. And we're gonna cut that from the bottom right. And it cuts really well. Sometimes these intricate dies can, you know, be tough to cut through. All those are cutting edges. Every little edge you see is a cutting edge. But this one just, I mean, look at that. They all just come right out. And you can use your die brush attachment. Probably need my foam piece, which was here a second ago. All right, look, now you have like shaker, a shaker card thingies, thingamajigs, if you wanted to. All right, let me put all those in the trash before they get all over my floor. And now we're ready to put it all together. So this split card extra dies are $28. I couldn't remember how much they are. They're really, you know, like stout dies. I feel like they're, you know, they're not delicate. They're pretty heavy duty. I like them. Okay. Did we get all the doodads? Nope. There's always a few, right? That kind of hang on. Let's get those out. Now you could use an adhesive sheet for this. However, all of those little things that come out are going to have adhesive sheet on the back and sometimes that gets, that just makes a mess and it's harder to cut through. So what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of Tombow on the sides and I feel like I put too much down on the bottom, which I always do. Spread it out so it doesn't squish out. And then we're going to put this, so this is um, polished pink on a Melon Mambo card base. And these two, I would say, are what we call color buddies. Color buddies is a term that Stampin' Up! uses for colors that coordinate together, that go well together. So this is one of those. Um, I was working on something this morning for when I come back, and pool party... Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay. I would say that those are color buddies too. I don't know if there's an official color buddy list, but the two new Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis are definitely color buddies. Definitely. All right, so I've got, I've got dimensionals. I'm going to kind of stick that so that the leaves kind of come over the front. Now, if you're familiar with geraniums, the flowers kind of like pop up above the plant. They kind of have like a long spindly um, stem like that. And so I kind of struggled at first knowing exactly where to put these flowers. And I looked at the catalog and they kind of have them hanging up back here like this which I think makes sense because the stems you wouldn't be able to see behind there. So play around with yours and see how you want it. And then the little 
sign will stick in hopefully. I put my dimensionals down low so that I could stick these down like that. Okay, and then we've got, um, good question Lois, can you turn that die upside down and punch the whole card? Let me, hold on, let me look, I think you can. Our little linen thread bow. That's a really good idea. I hadn't even thought about that. Let me tell you. Hold on. Let me finish this and I'll and I'll test it. And we're gonna put that just right there. This is um a stitched scallop rectangle from the contour scallop dies. Basic white. And then We'll put this guy on with dimensionals right here, kind of in the bottom left corner, but still that may, that dimensional may be over a little bit too far. Let's just do it like that. You know, we're gonna need one over here. There we go. And then last but not least, I thought that these butterflies, I'm almost out. They look like they're flying away. These brushed, brass butterflies were a good little embellishment to go along with. Oh, well maybe that butterfly wants to fly down towards the plant. Nope, you're gonna go that way. Nope. There we go. Okay, and then one more. That guy's gonna go that way. And there you go. And you know, if you're not a pink person, don't worry. I think you could do this in any colors. And you know what, I looked, I did Google what color geraniums come in, and they're mostly um, pinks and reds and whites. Do, do they come in anything? Else? Like maybe a coral, like a, a coral, you know, like a calypso coral. Okay, so Lois said, could you turn this? So if you ran it through like that, and then, yeah, you totally could, yeah. So run it through like that, and then, run it through like that. So would it overlap? Possibly. You'd have to put it right on the edge because this one may be, or maybe if you did just the, the card front, because this piece is four by five and a fourth. So then if you did it like that and then ran it through again like that, yeah, I think you would, I think you'd totally do that. Those, that kind of looks cool, right? Those two. Good idea, I'll have to try that. All right, there we go. Project number one is done. Let's move on to project number two. Let me clean up my mess. I need to get a little, well, you know, I'm always throwing my little dimensionals, just like tossing them. And I keep thinking if I keep a little bowl here to keep them collected, but I think that it, that is such like, um, habit for me to just flick them that I'll forget to put them in the bowl. Let's see. I'm going to try it out because <laughs> I hate when I see in my video all those little dimensionals papers everywhere. It bugs me. All right. Now the next one that we're going to do is a uh, paper piecing. All right. We're going to paper piece this together using the dies. So the only thing we're going to stamp is the sentiment. And I have to tell you, my inspiration for this card, there's a house here in my neighborhood that I walk by and it's, um, her house is kind of up. And so she has a like, you know, some steps going up to her front door. And she in the spring always gets pots of red um, geraniums and has them going up the stairs. So I kind of wanted to mimic that, um, the stairs. So I that's what I did with the strips. Okay, now, I have already done some of this ahead of time because it's a little bit tedious. So we're just gonna do one of the flower and the flower pots. Um, but if you make this, obviously you need to do two. Um, adhesive sheets, I highly recommend adhesive sheets for this. Um, these, unless you're just really good with <laughs> glue, which as we know, I am not. And another thing I like to do is split my adhesive sheet in the middle so that when I cut it, let's see, where are my dies? 
when I cut it like this, there's gonna be a split in the middle that gives me that edge to peel it off, okay? Um, because sometimes when you have that, um, the whole thing is covered with adhesive sheets and you're trying to get off the edge, it's, it's hard. And I, um, with these, they're so delicate, I really had a hard time um, getting them off the edge. So I recommend splitting up your adhesive sheet like that. Okay, so we're gonna cut that out. This is the this is the part that really confused me when I first did it. The back of these, it I, I didn't understand. Like I didn't understand how it went. So I'm gonna show you what I what I did because you might that might be you might get confused with that too. All right, so this is the top layer right here. This is the bottom layer. All right, and then you need the pot and that little like lip on the pot and all of that is basic white all right so let me lay this on here and then i'll drag it over like this and hopefully we can get them all cut through at the same time um patty i don't know where is my desk vacuum that's a good idea oh here it is i forgot about it it, I to I'm so glad you said that. I totally forgot. Is it charged? Nope, it needs a battery. Man, that's so funny. I totally forgot. I'm going to leave that out. Thank you for reminding me. I love the desk vacuum. I totally forgot about it. All right. Now, when you put adhesive sheets on the back of something, it makes the paper thicker. So sometimes your die cuts don't cut through all the way. So go through a couple of times. And another thing that you can do, which I'll show you, is put your dies upside down and run them through that way. That really, for whatever reason, that really makes a huge difference. So let me see, that one's good, but this one, we're gonna lay it down like that. Hopefully I didn't move it. So your die is down, the cutting edge is up, and you put your paper down like that. And then when you run it through, it just like really cuts through. I don't know why that is. I mean, they say it's because this bottom surface isn't as giving as the top surface, but that doesn't really make sense to me. But whatever, turn them upside down and you'll get a really good deep cut that way. All right, so now let's see, where's my foam piece? I had it sitting out right here. Now, if you don't like, you know, um, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Tedious, <laughs> then this may not be the best option. You may wanna to stick to the stamping because this is a little bit tedious with all these little pieces. I love paper piecing and I would, like to paper piece things before I stamp them uh, over you know I prefer that over stamping but not everybody feels that way but I just wanted you to all see the difference um, in putting these two together all right so here are all of our pieces this is a die brush attachment for your take your pick tool and when you buy it this foam piece comes with it so this piece last week when I was trying to figure it out I thought it went like that, and I was like, what's happening? This doesn't fit. Well, this goes this way. I don't know why I couldn't see that. I, I mean, it took me several minutes to figure that out. So, if you're confused, like me, turn it around, and it will fit. All right, so now, use that. See how the, there's a split there in the adhesive, and that makes it easier to pull off that backing. By the way, I spoke with my oldest daughter several times this week. I told you guys last week I was super worried about her. She is fine. She's doing a backpacking canoe trip in the Boundary Waters of Minnesota, and I was very concerned about her freezing to death <laughs> and being off the grid. Um, she is fine. I, I, she sent a few texts with pictures and then uh, yesterday I got, or maybe it was the day before yesterday, I actually got to talk to her 
And it has been cold at night, but she said they put hot water bottles down in their sleeping bags and that it stayed warm pretty much all night, which I was like, wow, that's what they used to do in the old days. <laughs> and then she said that she's having fun and she said she was homesick a little bit, but that she was still having a good time. I think she's ready to come home. They had hiked about, I think it was like 37 miles. And then they were doing five days of canoeing. So she said the canoe days were going to be a lot easier. And she was looking forward to that. So she said that she hadn't taken her hair out of braids since the trip started, which, ew. I mean, she said, you know, that's the way it is out there. But I guess braids is a good idea. You know, then you just don't have to worry about it. No showers, no toilets out there. Definitely not my kind of trip. I could tell you that for sure. I'm not cut out for that. All right, so this top layer is super delicate. So be careful as you are pulling that adhesive off and then you just lay it down on there like that, okay? So now we've got the pot and the, the pot lip, I guess is what you call that. And I've got my blending brush and just some um, uh, crumb cake ink and I'm just gonna dirty it up give it a kind of a vintage feel same with this one I just sound like I just got a text but I'm on do not disturb so hopefully I didn't forget to put do not disturb on maybe I did forget I hate that because if somebody calls then Facebook kicks me off all right, now this stamp right here is, we used this last week too, this texture stamp from Oceanfront. I've been using this stamp quite a bit. And I'm gonna do it, just the little dots right there in the corner. All right, now we are ready to put this all together. Let me grab all of this. The DSP that I'm using is from the Design a Daydream DSP that is in the back of the catalog. It is a, um, something you can get with Stampin' Rewards. Stampin' Rewards are when you spend over $150 or you have a workshop or a class and the group orders more than $150, you earn Stampin' Rewards. And um, that is one of the, you can choose anything with Stampin' Rewards, but those things, including this DSP, is exclusive you can only get them by spending your stamp and rewards on them. So that's what this paper is. It's $18 stamp and rewards. All right, old olive card base. And I like this paper because it kind of looked like a lattice. And I'm gonna put that right there. And then we're gonna do our stairs. I'm using craft paper, which I have just been using right and left. I don't know suddenly I'm just on a craft paper kick and these are three and three fourths by seven eighths and then three and three fourths by three and then three and three fourths by two and a fourth all of those measurements are there on that PDF that you can print save again I asked you guys if you had checked the blog and then I never looked for your answer <laughs> Hopefully the PDF is there, hopefully. If not, I will fix it after we're done. 17 on Monday in Northern Wisconsin. Se Lisa, 17 degrees? S please tell me that that is not 17 degrees. Um, sentiment is going down here on the bottom stair, reaching out with friendship and caring in Garden Green. And then we'll get lots of dimensionals here. My regular dimensionals. Did I already get them out? Maybe I did not. Hmm. All right, somebody locate my dimensionals. They are not here. Let me see. Good thing I have my adhesive chore. Okay, good. Thank you, ladies, for telling me that it's up. Good. Very good. 
And Lisa, oh my gosh, that's too cold for the summer. Ugh. You, are you used to it? Do you like it? 17 degrees in on the very end of May? Because I don't think I would like it. And Monday's supposed to be 90. Lisa, so two different places in Wisconsin? Oh, so Lisa's in northern Wisconsin. I have a friend who goes to Wisconsin in the summers. They have a house. And I'm always so jealous that she gets to escape the heat here. I can't even imagine. Thanks, Donna. 72 here and gorgeous. Oh, Trisha, that sounds amazing. It's 9,000 degrees here and not gorgeous. <laughs> no, it's sunny and pretty, but it's hot. Very hot. We did have a nice cool morning yesterday. It was like... 55 or 58 or something. I actually had to put a little light jacket on when I went for my walk. It was so nice. All right, many dimensionals on the back of these. And um, I'm going to put the, some pearls on top of them, so I'm not worried too much about that showing through. Um, I cut out two of the little signs from brushed metallic cardstock. And I'm going to tuck them in. I didn't stamp anything on them. I'm just going to tuck them in. No, it's getting old. Cranberry Marsh is typically cooler. Cranberry Marsh. That sounds really cool. I want to go see a Cranberry Marsh. I love cranberry. All right. Now, last but not least, I have these new iridescent basic pearls that I love. I didn't think we needed. Look, look. Did I, did I not tell you guys that I would forget to throw all of this in the little bowl? It's like muscle memory. I can't fix it. <laughs> I can't change my habit. Um, I didn't know that we needed any more pearls until I got these. And now I'm like, where have these been? These are so beautiful. These, they kind of have that little rainbow iridescent look on them. If I can get this one. Well, this one's like a rogue pearl. All right. I'm just using the little tiny ones to put in the middle of my flowers. And let's do one more. And there we go. And no bow. I didn't do a bow this time. I did not. Let's do, let's, you know what? Oh, did I forget? I did forget to put the inside of this card. I was wondering what that piece of white was for. Birthdays are reminders that we should be celebrated. Okay, well, we'll put that in here. Did I put white on the inside of this one? I did not. So nothing on the inside of that one. But I do have an extra piece of white that we could put on the inside. I like that sentiment. Where is it? Birthdays. What does it say? Birthdays are reminders that life should be celebrated okay and then we'll put this one here and we don't have to stamp anything on this one and there you go two different ways to do i almost called them hydrangeas two different ways to do the geraniums all right Okay, I have one more project for you. Let me clean up a little bit. Let's see, do we need this? See, look, I need to put all this back. Nice and neat. Um, do I have any Stranger Things fans today watching? I have never been a real big Stranger Things fan. But if you know, if you're a Netflix person, you know Stranger Things Season 4 comes out today. So I have rewatched Seasons 2 and 3. And now I'm so excited about Stranger Things coming out. It, come, it came out today and it's taking everything in me not to start watching it. My husband said I had to wait for him. Rude. <laughs> Rude. I should be watching Stranger Things or anything other than the news because let me tell you, that has been difficult. I, You guys, I probably told you I'm a news junkie and when things horrible happen, then I can't turn it off. It's awful. It's awful. Um, okay. 
My gosh, I made a big mess. I didn't even close my glue. All right, one more project. We're gonna need these. I'm gonna leave those there. I'm gonna move this over here. Now, the next project, I wanted to do a 3D project. I didn't really have any good ideas. As you guys know, my brain has not been in the right place this week. But I decided to pull out our new, um, they're called embossed gift bags. And they're beautiful. Sometimes we need the easy button, right? Sometimes we don't have the time or the energy to create something from scratch. So that's where these come in. Um, they are treat bags. And all you have to do is this. Oh, look, I just ripped it. All you have to do is this. Ta-da! And there it is. Don't rip it, okay? Don't be like me. But how cute is that? So I like the size in comparison to like an ink pad. Um, it's it's bigger than a you know than like a small ink. I mean a small gift bag, but it's not huge. So I think it's more like um, you know like a gift maybe jewelry or something like that, other than like not necessarily candy, although you can obviously do candy. I'm gonna grab another one because that's annoying me. I have a bunch of them. All right, so let's get rid of that one. Let's see if I can open it without ripping it. Just pop it open and Voila. Now they come in white and I decided to make mine pink, of course. And there's there's different ways to color them. Um, and I'm going to spritz it with a spritzer. Um, our spritzers look like this and they come in packs of two. And actually, I lost the first one. <laughs> so I filled another one and then I found the second one. So I have two of them. So in the spritzer, um, I filled it with 91% isopropyl alcohol. I have no idea what that means, but what I do know is that if you have a lower number, it's gonna clog your spritzer. So make sure if you do this, you use the higher numbers. I'm sure there's somebody out there that could explain to us what that means, but it is not important. Just know that you need the higher numbers. Um, I learned that the hard way. It will clog up your spritzer. So I put two drops of Melon Mambo and then filled it with alcohol. And you have to cover your surface and give yourself like a big space. It probably isn't big enough because no matter what you think you're doing, your spritzer is gonna spritz in the wrong area, okay? I mean, just trust me on that. It's gonna be, you think you're spritzing and then you spritz yourself in the face you spritz your shirt, it's, it's a problem. So <laughs> just um, be prepared. And one thing that I do sometimes when I don't necessarily have a box is I'll lay it down into my trash can and spritz it in my trash can. And that seems to, you know, cover. And the spritzing, it's not gonna give you a solid, it's gonna give you this spritzy look, kind of spray paintish look right? Um, and so to kind of enhance that look, I'm going to take my sweet sorbet and flick ink on it. Um, I think you could use a, like a brayer, a foam roller to put ink on here, probably get a more smooth pattern, but that wasn't really, I just kind of wanted it to be kind of funky. That's pretty funky. <laughs> it's got lots of dots. All right, I'm gonna put that to the side to dry. Alcohol, because we use alcohol, that's going to dry pretty quickly. All right, so remember that piece of white? Where did I have it? Oh good, here's some more. Okay, now we're gonna use, we're gonna do stamping again, um, but we're also gonna use this die right here. We're gonna um, cut that out of white, and then we're gonna put it on white a white tag so it's white on white just to kind of create some texture on our tag again splitting that right there this tray is taking up too much space let's see see look i've got spritz right here all over <laughs> 
no matter how good you think you are, you're going to get it where you don't want it. All right, let me, let's do our stamping before we bring that cut and emboss machine. We're going to do the same thing we did the first time, um, except this time we're going to do sweet sorbet ink. I think I've used sweet sorbet like every week since that, that color came out. Charlie, buddy, all right. It's making a weird noise. Um, my scrap paper right here. So I'm going to stamp off. And then stamp. Okay, and then put that right there. Line it up. Well, if I can get my head in here. Okay. Uh, hold on. Nope, I moved my paper. Let's try that again. Sorry, hold oh, please. Okay. Let go of my paper. All right, beautiful. Now, I'm not gonna do two-step stamping. I'm gonna show you guys a little trick with this one. I'm gonna stamp this. Do I have a block that's big enough? Um, I do not, so let's use the Stamparatus. Stamparatus comes through in a pinch anytime you don't have a block. I'm gonna stamp this in Garden Green, and then I'm gonna use my Blender Pen. We haven't used Blender Pens very much here at Pink Buckaroo in a while. And it's a great way to just spread your ink around so in a blender pen, it's just some kind of solvent. I'm, I don't know what it is. Somebody knows. But it will. you can just color over and it'll spread that ink around and kind of fill in those spaces. It's just a different option instead of using that background stamp or that back, you know, the back solid part. All right. So there we go. There's that. And then now we are ready to cut. Oh, look, he's like, hey, you were supposed to use me and you did it. Sorry, friend. All right, bring this over here. And I'm gonna put this so that that adhesive split is there in the middle. And I'm gonna have to run this through twice anyway. Put that one on there. Glycerin? Ooh, look at you guys. Glycerin. All right. What is glycerin? What is glycerin used for? I've seen that um, when we used to make bubbles. <laughs> when I was a teacher, we always did bubbles at the end of the year, and it always would say to have better bubbles, get some glycerin. And I never knew what that was. Glycerin. All right. Let's look. Okay, good. We did good. Charlie, you sound like you're snoring, bud. The old man snore. All right, we'll be, let's do this like that. Let's move it up a little bit like that. We'll put it upside down this time. Oops. Oops, I think we're okay, but let's just make sure. Stay there. Now let's get all these little doodads out. Now this flower dye, this is just like a general flower. I don't think it's necessarily supposed to look like a geranium. Um, where is my other? Oh, there it is. It's, it's a cute little, just kind of like a strip of flowers.
All right, now we have a white tag. This is a tailor-made tag. And see, the problem here is that I can't see the split. There it is, right there. It helps peel that off so nicely if your eyes can see it. <laughs> Again, be gentle because this is delicate and it will tear. So what's for dinner tonight, everybody? What are we having on Friday night? I'm thinking. And you know what I really want is like chips and queso. Does that count as dinner? <laughs> chips and queso and a margarita sound just about perfect tonight. I don't know. I'm, I'm really trying to eat good and that, that's not really on the eat good list. Sometimes you just want comfort food, right? Some kind of, I want to sit and eat that and drink that and watch Stranger Things and have nobody ask me to cook anything or clean anything. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to cut out that label. Let's do that real quick. Do I have any white paper left? Do I have any white paper right here? Okay, let's cut that. This little label that's so cute. Oh, look. Let's use this piece because that doesn't have an adhesive backing on it. This little stitched label, I'm gonna use a lot. Chicken and eggplant. Well, Nancy, now that sounds healthy. Are you on, are you being healthy? Or you just like to eat healthy anyways? I'm not an eggplant fan. I do like chicken. Wisconsin fish fry, that sounds fine. Grilled steaks, mm, Janice, that, that does sound good. Hamburgers are always a good idea, Carol. Yum. Usually on Friday nights, we do takeout. My husband picks up food on the way home. I don't cook on Friday nights. I cook a lot, but not on Friday nights. All right, we're gonna use that same sentiment. Birthdays are reminders that life should be celebrated. You know, and I meant to point out to you guys how many sentiments are in this set. There's a lot. And these little ones, I always love little sentiments, will fit on that little sign. So this set, again, is really good. Really good. Terry, are you here? Is Terry here? Because I wanna know, Terry, if you have this stamp set. Terry's my downline. She is my, she's at the top of my downline list, which means she has been with me from the been with me the longest we'll say that and terry i realized just recently her 10-year anniversary with stampin up is coming up that's a really long time okay right terry we haven't had it yet it's in november i don't know if terry's here um now we're gonna put this here and i'm gonna do something that you might not approve of we're gonna put the the flowers down low. I know that they probably should go up high, but we're not gonna do that. Um, the label is from this geranium set. Maria, it's with the geranium set. Okay, so see how I tucked that in? Yeah, the, look, I did it again. You guys, it's, it's, it's useless. I can't remember to put them in the bowl. The label is part of that geranium set right there. This little die right here is one that I didn't use. This little one, and it's like dirt to put in your pot. I didn't, I didn't use it. I didn't really feel like I needed it. All right, so I have two strips of DSP. And um, I am going to flag them. And our Taylor made, our Taylor tag punch is gone. It's retired, so I can't use it anymore on these big wide pieces. So I'm just going to use my scissors like the olden days. Cut a line up the middle and then cut from each corner. I know I can still use my Taylor Tag Punch, but it's retired, so I'm gonna try not to use it on videos. <laughs> Believe me, I'll be using it when I'm not making videos. All right, let's bring over our little bag. And, oh, you know what? I wanna adhere all of these pieces together. This paper is um, Heart and Home DSP, and Two by six and two by five. And I kind of adhered them together like that. I think I will adhere this together too. 
in the middle like that. And then we're gonna use one of those Walmart clothes pins that I love. And we'll just clip it together like that. All right. And then we've got this beautiful new natural trim, natural ribbon. And I'm gonna tie a big bow. This, this ribbon is big. It's seven eighths inches wide. I, it says seven eighths, but it looks like a full inch to me. Every bit of an inch. Um, oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then snip. And I think that a bow this big, probably you should use a hot glue gun. But I'm gonna use glue dots because I don't have my hot glue gun turned on. But if you're giving this as a gift, I would definitely use something stronger than a glue dot. All right, and there you have it. What do you guys think about the potted geraniums? Congratulations, Teresa. 10 years is a long time. Yes, it is. That is really awesome. And then who else? Who said that they joined with Ann yesterday? Is that Carrie? Yes, Carrie's in Vancouver. Congratulations. Terry, there you are. Are you trying to work? <laughs> and I'm calling you out. Um, you commented earlier, it's not on your list. I didn't see your comment, sorry. But that, if I didn't stop watching, it probably would be by the end of life. Ha ha ha. See, I know you so well, Terry. It's got really beautiful sentiments, Terry. I'm surprised that that wasn't on your list immediately. Really pretty. Okay, you guys, we made it to the end. Um, I had a, I have two bonus projects for you. This was yesterday's, one of my probably most favorite cards I've made in a very long time. Um, it's a little vintage-y. I used very vanilla instead of basic white. Um, and that lattice, oh, I can't remember the name of the dies, but it's on yesterday's blog post if you want details on this card. I even like fancied it up on the inside too. All right, and then I have another one, this one right here for Monday. All right, this one I used a mask in the back and I made it a really big geranium. So that will be on the blog on Monday. And then today, here are all three of our projects from today. All right, now you guys remember if you missed it at the beginning, this week's Facebook Friday is different. There won't be any free make and takes this week, but if you put in an order by Monday at midnight, um, your order, if it's over $50, this week's ordering threshold is $50. I will send you a free embellishment when I get back from my trip. Please use this host code. Also, all orders um, between now and Monday at midnight, um, I will be donating all my profits or proceeds or whatever you want to call them to the Family Services Crisis Response in Uvalde. That's in our South Texas community, and they are going to need a lot of support for a really long time. So that's why I've decided. Um, you guys know I was a teacher, so I'm just trying to process like how those kids and those teachers are going to move on, and they're going to need a lot of counseling, a lot, a lot of counseling. So this um, is a San Antonio organization that is serving in Uvalde. Uvalde is about an hour and a half from here. It's um, it's like, a, I say a rural community. That's not really the right word. I mean, the town is about 16,000 people. Um, it's more like an agricultural community. There's lots of ranches, farmland around, um, but it's part of our South Texas community. So anyway, a lot of the resources are coming from San Antonio and, uh, that's where now if you want to donate directly to family services i put a link up yesterday on facebook um if you want to look on if you search um donation opportunities for uvalde the uvalde i believe it was the uvalde city website had a list of places that they were recommending um you know whatever you feel strongly about um, I know that funeral um, expenses are being covered and there was um, a GoFundMe account. God, I'm, I'm not going to go deep into this because I'm going to lose it, but there's a GoFundMe account for different families. Just be careful on those. Do your research. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there to help. So 
this is how I'm doing it. If you want to join with me, you can do that. Um, if you want to just buy a PDF, that 100% of that I will turn back around and donate here. Or you can donate directly, whichever you want to do, if you feel if you feel led. All right, you guys, I'll be out of town all next week. I won't, there won't be a Facebook Live next week. I'll be back on um, whatever that is, um, June, I don't know, what is it, 10th? June 10th, and we're going to do the Heron Habitat, I believe. <laughs> okay, you guys, thank you so much for your support. Um, I appreciate it. Lots of you reached out to me this week. I do appreciate it. It's not my school. It's not my kids, but it sure does feel like it. It's been rough, and um, they're going to need a lot of, they're going to need a lot of a lot. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you in two weeks. Bye.